Chag Sameach, everyone. We're getting ready for the holiday, and here at Palm Beach Synagogue, we're packaging 500 Pesach delivery packages for everyone to have a Zisim Pesach. And I just want to show you some of the items in this beautiful Passover package. Of course, we have the matzah, the beautiful Shmur matzah, the handmade matzah, that is very special to eat on the night of Passover, not just the square matzah, but the handmade round matzah, just like the Jews ate when they left Egypt 3,333 years ago. Of course, we have the wine because we need the four cups of wine and many other items for the Passover Seder. And what's very interesting about uh, Judaism is that King David in the book of Psalms says, Tamu uru'u ki tov Hashem. Taste and you will see that God is good. Now, in the general secular world, when we talk about enlightenment, we say seeing is believing, or we say insight, or I see what you're saying. But King David seems to say that spirituality, more than about seeing it, is eating it and tasting it. Taste it and you will see that God is good. And the question is why the metaphor of eating, and as Jews, of course, we eat special foods in every holiday, why eating versus seeing? And perhaps the answer is that when you see something, it doesn't become a part of you, it remains separate from you. But when you eat something, it becomes a part of you. It becomes part of your actual being and your life force and your blood flow and stream. And the lesson in Judaism is that we have to not only see something and be detached from it, but we have to become attached and one with the spiritual lessons. We have to internalize it. And that's the secret to our eternal identity as a Jewish nation because we always internalize the lessons. And that's why the Seder plate, which is filled with symbolic foods for the night of Passover, and each item on the Seder has a message. When the Seder is over, the plate is empty practically. Why? Where is all the food that was on the Seder plate in the beginning of the Seder? It's inside of us. And the idea is that the messages of the Seder plate, whether it's the bitter enslavement and having empathy for those who are suffering, or whether it's the matzah, which represents our humility in the presence of God, or whether it is the egg, which represents the cycle of life. We can't just learn these lessons and see it, but we have to let it become a part of us. We have to digest it and ingest it and make it a part of our very being. That is the Jewish definition of spirituality. That is the spiritual diet of the Jewish people, which reminds me of a verse that King David says, I am the Lord your God, I took you out of the land of Egypt. Open up your mouth wide and I will fill it up. What God is saying is that you could ask me for anything because remember, I'm capable of taking you out of your Egypt. So therefore don't hold back, open your mouth wide and I will fill it up. But perhaps what King David is also saying is that the lessons of the Exodus from Egypt have to be with internalized within you, open up your mouth and I will fill it up, meaning I will fill you up with faith. And that's why our rabbis tell us that the matzah, one of the names in the Zohar for the matzah is the bread of faith, michla de memenusa, because when we eat the matzah, we internalize the faith that our ancestors had when they left Egypt. And that's the ultimate goal that the faith should become a part of us. Today is the 11th day of Nisan on the Hebrew calendar, the day that is the birthday of the Lubavitcher Rebbe of blessed memory. And Rabbi Jonathan Sachs said something so beautiful once about the Rebbe. He said that the Rebbe assumed his leadership in 1950, five years after the end of the Holocaust. And he said that as Hitler sought out every Jew with hatred, the Rebbe sought out every Jew with love. And one of the most beautiful stories about the Rebbe was when a man once came to the Rebbe and said, Rebbe, if God designed the human body, why is it that God placed the heart of man since in Judaism, the right side is always considered the greater, the more preferable side, why didn't God put our heart on the right side of our body? And the Rebbe said to this fellow, that if your heart was created for yourself, then you would have a great question. It should be on your right side. But because your heart was created for the person standing in front of you, God put it on your left side, which is the right side of the person before you. This is a lesson that the Rebbe internalized that was a part of his very character and being. And he taught us to remember that within us, there is a heart, a human heart, a Jewish heart. And that heart is meant to give, to pulsate with kindness and love. And like the Rebbe, 
who, who was born on this day, devoted his life to loving the Jewish people and all of humanity with goodness, kindness, and righteousness. Every one of us must look within our heart and find the love, the love of God, the love of our fellow man, to turn this world into a place which is a paradise for God and for man to live. Have a wonderful day.